Let's talk about debugging strategies in programming. Let's face it, errors happen. Unless you are absolutely flawless in your thinking, design, and keyboard finger skills, you will make mistakes that need to be fixed. Generally speaking, there are four types of errors that can happen in the programming process. In the compile time, the two types that happen are lexical and syntax. Once these are fixed and the program runs, there are still two other types of errors that can make your life miserable, runtime and logic. Most languages have IDEs, or Integrated Development Environments, which are simply text editors that have cool debugging tools to help you out. The compiler will generate messages that will give you clues as to where an error occurred and the nature of it. Sometimes the messages are clear on how to fix it, sometimes they are not. And you may have to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and do some detective work in finding and fixing the mistake. Let's take a look at a program in Java and demonstrate some possible errors you may encounter in the coding process. First of all, you can see that many of the lines have been commented out. This is a very useful debugging technique when you are searching for an error and want to go line by line, uncovering each one as you try to find out where the error is. When we run this part of the program, you can see that the integer variable age gets the value 16 and then is output to the screen. Uncovering the rest of the program, you can see the full output with no errors. Now we'll introduce some lexical or word-related errors and see what happens. Let's take off the E from the word sequence in the class name on line 2 and see the resulting error message. It's not terribly helpful, but a different tab view shows you an arrow pointing to the location of the error. This arrow view is quite helpful in showing you where the compiler stopped when it saw the error. Now let's reverse the words static and void in the main header on line 3. This causes three errors where messages generated aren't clear at all, but again, the other view shows arrows that help you zoom in on the problem area. Another type of lexical error is when reserved words are not capitalized correctly, like string and system in Java. The error messages are different for each one, since the nature of the two terms is different. Again, the arrows are more helpful in discovering where these errors occurred. Misspelling a command, like this print line statement, is also a lexical error. And again, when you compile it, the arrow points right to the problem. If you misspell a variable name, like this one, another error message is produced, as well as the arrow pointing to the location. Syntax errors are punctuation errors, like leaving off the semicolon from the end of a statement. The error message is quite clear in this case, and the arrow points right to the problem. Managing the braces and parentheses inside of a Java program is very important. They come in pairs and need to be in the right places. Many editors help you see how they match up by highlighting them, as you can see in these examples. Leaving off an opening brace causes a particular syntax error message, as you can see here. If you leave off a closing brace, it's a different kind of message. Leaving off the double quote at the end of a string also generates an error and sometimes cascades into several error messages. When you see a bunch of these messages, don't panic. Just fix the first one, and then that may take care of several others down the line. Now, let's put some new code into the program and explore runtime errors. This new code will allow keyboard input during the execution of the program. As you can see, it asks for a name and allows it to be entered, as well as an age to be entered, resulting in a predictable output. Now, we're going to intentionally mess up, typing in the age when it asks for the name and vice versa. No error happens here because a string variable will accept anything that's input from the keyboard. However, if we type in the name for the age, the program blows up with an error message, input mismatch exception, 
which simply means that the program was expecting a number, but instead got a word. This is a simple example of a runtime error, one that occurs during the execution or the run of a program. Finally, we'll introduce some code that will demonstrate a logic error. This new code will output an appropriate message based on the age of the person using an if else conditional statement. Clearly, Joe, age 42, is old enough to drive, as you can see in the output. But when we input Susie, age 11, the output says that she is not old enough to drive. Again, both of these make perfect sense logically. Now we'll go to the code and we'll reverse the comparison operator to make the logic backwards. When we input Joe, age 42, the output says he's not old enough to drive, which we logically know is not true. When we input Susie, age 11, it says she can drive, but we know she's way too young to drive. So the output in both of these cases is now wrong. It is logically incorrect. This is a classic yet simple example of a logic error. Some of them will be easy to find, like this one, but others are going to be much more difficult, and it takes a lot of practice to find logic errors. So in summary, we've talked about four different types of errors that you can encounter in a typical program, regardless of the language. You're going to have word-related errors, which are called lexical errors, punctuation-based, which are called syntax, both of those happen during the compile process. And then during the runtime process, you'll actually have runtime errors, where something breaks the program. Or you just simply have logic errors, where the program runs just fine, but it's still not right.